It was a decision to record today. I almost took the day off. I've been sitting on the phone, as some of you may or may not understand, although I'm sure most of you understand. I have been sitting on a very frustrating T-Mobile call. I do have to give credit to the last person that I spoke with, Ed Nard, and... Despite my frustration at having been tossed around from person to person and not getting answers I wanted on a, a situation that really should be easily resolved, in retrospect, I have a great deal of appreciation for his patience with a very frustrated customer. And his staying calm and maintaining a really balanced demeanor. So... I'm not sure why that reminded me of poetry. Uh, I haven't read a poem in a long time, and I apologize if this is a repeat, but it was really honestly the poem that I'm feeling at this moment. So I'm going to share with you a Mary Oliver poem called Wild Geese, and then chat a little bit about it and kind of see where it takes my beliefs for today. So the poem goes, you do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. And I believe if, if I go back in my life, that was probably the, the first poem that introduced me to Mary Oliver. Um, subsequently, I've read most of what she's written. She speaks to me quite deeply. I like the connections to nature. And I like how, in this sense, nature really represents something far broader and far deeper and much more spiritual than just looking at what's out there. So I don't want to really go too deeply into it because I want everybody to have honestly their own reaction to it, whatever, you know, I wanted to speak to all of you, however it speaks to you. Um, but on a light level, I think for me, the, the turning, the turning two lines um, are, tell me about your despair. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. And I think in retrospect, those two lines speak very deeply because I like the tell me about despair yours and I will tell you mine. Because we all we all go through it, um, you know, and, and somewhere along the line, I, I think we get too caught up in telling people to smile or to cheer, you know, cheer up or it's going to get better. And, and while they're all wonderful messages and they all come from a warm place. The reality is that sometimes in the moment, there is no smile. And sometimes in the moment, I'm feeling despair and sadness and frustration and grief. And it's important that I let myself or you let yourself feel that and really go through that emotion and really process that grief. And if we bury it, we know the results of that. We, you know, we know the deep trauma that just comes from when we, we spend time burying what we feel and, and not allowing it to, to see the light of day. It, it's important to allow yourself to feel all of those emotions you feel. But then the next line strikes me even deeply. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Because I think sometimes we feel so encapsulated by what we're feeling and what we're going through that we think the world is stopping with us. And we realized that outside that window or outside that door or down the street, life is moving on like it always moves on. You know, here I am and people are walking on the beach and 
people are laughing and people are going out to a restaurant. So, you know, in this case, it was my frustration and anger on a phone. Other cases, it's been my sorrow and grief at a deep loss. And whatever it is, while I feel that, I can't expect the whole world to feel it with me, that life goes on. And I think that's a really, really important piece. Uh, it, I guess important enough that I, that I wear it on my body. Um, I have a, the Persian uh, writing for, and this too shall pass. And that's been a reminder for me. Um, it, it's in Persian because it comes from a story about a king, a great king who was frustrated by all of the weight of what he had to do to run the kingdom and the fact that just when something was going well, some disaster struck. And he was watching a monk who just seemed to be at perfect peace. So he went to that monk and he asked them, how is it that you manage to find such peace in your life? And he said, I'll pay any price, anything you want, all the riches, just if you can guide me to what it is that he, you managed to do to feel the way you feel. And the monk told him, you don't have enough riches for that, but it's okay because I'll give it to you for free. So he said, I'll be back in three months with your answer. And three months later, the monk came back and he handed the king a beautiful ornate wooden carved box with jade inlay in the top. And the king opened the box and there was a silver ring in the box. And inscribed on the silver ring was the phrase in Persian, and this too shall pass. And the monk let the, the king know, put the ring on your finger. And when everything is going your way and you feel like life is absolutely perfect, touch the ring and remind yourself that enjoy it while it's here. Because in fact, it will pass. But likewise, <clears throat> when you're in your deepest despair and you feel like nothing can ever, ever improve what you're feeling and you're in absolute sorrow or anger or frustration, touch the ring again and remind yourself, and this too shall pass. Don't attach yourself to the worst moments and think that that dark cloud that's hanging over your head is going to hang over your head forever. Because in fact, like all clouds, it's going to pass along in the sky. And I think it's that clinging that we have, that we have a great moment and we can't even enjoy the great moment because we're so afraid we're going to lose the great moment. Or it's that trap we feel like our life is always going to struggle like it's struggling now <laughs> and when we remind ourselves that these things will pass like mary oliver's poem that says meanwhile the world goes on if we can hold those in our heart it makes life quite a bit more manageable so that's what i have for you um, in a little bit of a business update, I will be uh, getting a website up and running in the next week or two. And I have decided to put to rest my initial business idea of Karen Coaching Solutions because in speaking with a former student who was involved in marketing, she thought it would be a great idea to unify all of my titles that I'm working under. So the Mindful Classroom is going to become a two-prong classroom. The first room will be my purpose and performance coaching. So it will be working with people and maybe ideally small groups of people in helping you figure out the purpose that you want in life. And then once you figure that out, how do you achieve the greatest performance that you want to achieve? And the key term there is helping you determine because I don't have your answer. I'll just be the roadmap that kind of guides you to the answer you're looking for. And then the second prong is still the mindful classroom, but this branch will be working with <coughs> students as a writing tutor, but more importantly, as a college application coach. 
so that I will help you first come to a realization on who do you see yourself being on your application? How do you want to present? How do you want this administration or this admissions office to look at you as a person? And then once we get to that, getting to the point of saying, here's how I present it. So I am the ideal version of myself. So I will be listing up the website shortly. Um, I look forward to working with any of you, but it will be from here on out, the mindful classroom. And I will tomorrow give you a little bit of background on where that came from and what it means to me. So have a great day, friends. I'll talk to you soon.